talk about the importance of silhouette to character design and also how to create silhouettes that have appeal and that will give your characters a little bit more visual interest. So what is a silhouette? A silhouette basically is an outline where you can see the external features of a character and if it's done well you can ascertain something about the character's profession, personality, age, sex, etc. So um, if you're thinking about this from the uh, standpoint of animation you want to create characters that have a good clear silhouette that's easy to read from a distance and this harkens back to when you're thinking about your own life and you think about the objects that you've encountered anything that is sharp tends to be something that could hurt you or you know in a more generic way can be dangerous whereas you know rounded shapes tend to be more approachable and more safe to uh, approach and that's not always the case uh, in, in you know with regards to how characters are designed but initially the first impression is such that that if we look at this witch over here we can see that the witch has a lot of angles and sharp shapes that can infer her personality it's like we know that it's a lady based upon the silhouette we know that the uh, lady is a witch and we can see that she's got a lot of sharp uh, features that suggest that she could be a threat versus this character up here which is comprised of rounded forms so probably not so much of a threat um, in this particular case we have a snake and the snake has two sharp fangs so right away that's kind of a universal sign that there uh, that the snake here is a threat it's dangerous we don't have to see the eyes we don't have to see the face to understand that that represents a threat and some of these other characters here too we can infer something about their profession their sex their you know body build right that's important like this guy over here wielding the axe is a little bit more stout right a little bit more of an anchor and this character that's uh, on the top left here is a character that's a little bit more muscular right has got more uh, more uh, definition and this character here at the bottom again is a relatively rounded character I know the character has sharp ears but the rest of the features are very round so uh, by and large that character is not considered to be a threat so when we talk about silhouettes one of the things I want you to pay particular attention to here is the fact that there is a distribution at work here when you're creating interesting characters that have a very distinguished silhouette and that has to do with the language of shapes um, and we're going to do some analysis here on some of these characters so you can see how shape size plays a role in creating visual interest so on our character on the top left here we can if we were to just take some lines to divide the head from the torso to the pelvis we can see that the relative height or the size of the head is going to be small and the body because of its mass is going to be large and the feet are going to be kind of a medium size so you'll see this idea of large medium and small shapes in character design so let's take a look at another one here in this case we've got a large head we've got a medium body and we've got small legs right if we look at our witch we see something that has a small medium and large relationship so you can think about this like a snowman, right? A snowman has typically uh, a large, medium, and uh, small set of shapes, but we can play with that snowman by stacking the large object on top, the medium in the middle, and the small in the bottom, and we can create some very interesting looking characters in this fashion. So that's something else that you should be aware of. When you're looking at character designs, take a look and see if you can identify the large medium and small shapes within those designs so now that we have that in place I just want to share a couple of techniques that I use when I'm working out silhouettes and it's going to be more along the lines of I, I in, you know in an upcoming video I'm going to talk about actually designing a character given a text description but in this particular case I just want to share some of the techniques that I use that I will apply in an upcoming video uh, and before I go ahead and do that, I want to talk about uh, a silhouette that's fairly generic. So if we look at this particular silhouette, 
there's not much information we can really tell about this character, right? So we can tell that it's got arms and legs. We might be able to uh, infer something about the sex of the character, but really it's fairly generic. And, you know, although the silhouette is clear in that we can distinguish the arms and the feet and the head apart from one another, we really can't tell much about the personality, occupation, build. It's a fairly generic looking character. Um, so, you know, we need to go ahead and change that. Also, if we look at the, if we look at the shape language here, it's like we can see that the head is, pr you know, pretty evenly proportioned. The body is roughly the same size and the feet are roughly the same size. So there's not much variation between large, medium, and small shapes for this particular character. So it's kind of generic looking. Um, you know, you will start to see, even in stylized characters that skew to be more realistic, you will still see large, medium, and small shapes because that has something to do with allowing your audience to easily distinguish characters apart from one another. Um, so something to definitely keep in mind. So if we take this existing silhouette here and try to find a way to make it interesting, I'll, I'll show you the technique, uh, the first technique that is um, that I use, and that is using the lasso tool. If I hit the L in the lasso tool, I can go ahead and say make the head big, and I'm basically going to hold down the shift key and draw with the lasso tool. And it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's actually not not too difficult. Uh, so I've got large head. What if we go for um, uh, you know kind of a medium or a, I'll, sh I'll go for a short body this time. Large head, short body, and I'll really play up the legs, right? So I can just fill that shape in, and I can now put arms. And what I'm doing is just drawing with the lasso tool, holding down the shift key, and I'm hitting alt backspace. Alt backspace fills your foreground color into your um, select selection. So I'll just go ahead and draw some other hands. And what I like about this approach is that you can add or subtract very easily. So if we wanted to assign, say, a female identity to this particular character, we have a very interesting looking design, right? And this is, you know, we're, we're focusing less on details and more about the shape language. So we get some information, okay, she's got a ponytail, she's kind of lanky, very short body, much more visually interesting to look at from a distance. And it's gonna be a character that you can really tell apart from another character. What if we were to change the build on this character? Let's just do another example. So with the lasso tool, L for the freehand lasso tool. Uh, let's go ahead and now make the body the biggest component. I'll fill that in with Alt Backspace or Option Delete. And then I'll make the head small. And uh, so we've got large, we've got small, and then we're going to have some medium legs. And we can go ahead and draw some arms. I'll give them some big, chunky arms. And we have a hint of a shirt. And even though the face is somewhat generic looking, we can always go back in and we can, you know, add some kind of a weird hairstyle, right? So now that gives us some insight into the character's personality. Now, it could, it's a little bit ambiguous still. We can kind of make this a little bit clearer because we still can't identify the sex of the character. We can say, all right, well, um, maybe what we can do is, um, I don't know, just give this character a little bit more. I'll just shorten the shirt a little bit, right? and you know kind of make the arms a little bit more prominent so we have something that tells us some information about the character maybe we have like baggy jeans right so this is a very quick way and this is method number one it's using the lasso tool kind of weird to use it first but when you st when you start getting used to it um, it becomes uh, you know a very quick way to ideate
So you're focusing more on shape and less on detail. All right, so I talked about method one, which is using the lasso tool. The other method of working with silhouettes is to actually use the brush and turn on the vertical symmetry tool. And the way this works is once you activate the symmetry tool, again, you have to make sure the brush tool is active. And then if you go to the butterfly on the top of the options here, choose vertical. And then you can simply move this wherever you wish and you can hit return to confirm and then uh, I'll just pick a color here and I'll start um, and when you draw on one side it's basically going to draw the other side so I can play with large medium and small shapes and you get a little bit more you know it's 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 quicker to get some of the outer details which I think might have some appeal to some of you but again I'm working from the outside to the inside of the character. I'm not worried about what the face looks like at this stage. I'm just trying to get a sense of personality through uh, the character. And then when I'm done with the symmetry tool, I can always turn it off and let's just give him a little, uh, you know, uh, pompadour, right? Uh, and then I can always go in and I can use the bucket tool, make sure that you're selecting all layers and you can just fill this guy in. Oops, you have to make sure that there's no gaps have some gaps here. Uh, okay, no gaps. Oh. Still gaps. Okay. Um, I'm sure that's probably a little bit seizure inducing, but let's see. Um, I just have to go around if there are any gaps just to make sure that they're all closed they look like they're enclosed great and then I can come back in and clear it out now here's something that you it's kind of a bonus tip here when you're filling in something here do you notice these little fringes if I zoom in really closely you can see the outline of the sketch that I've actually created and that's a function of this brush that I'm using if I want to make that a little bit more refined what I can do is I can hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC and simply click the layer that contains the silhouette and then fill that in with your color. So option delete. And now I just have this nice crisp outline. Now the cool thing about what I'm showing you here is you can take this silhouette and then you can refine it with the lasso tool. So if I wanted to come back in and you know clean up the shoes a little bit or maybe just kind of make one of the fingers a little bit more distinguished or round them off uh, and, and fill in areas, I can easily do that. So that, you know, these two techniques kind of work in tandem and I typically do that with my own designs and you know, the idea here is I'm just playing with large, medium and small shapes and trying to get a character that looks visually interesting uh and uh you know, you know, some sense of a personality, okay? So we know something about this guy's build we know uh, something that okay, it's a male character, he's got some raggedy clothes on, so that infers something about the character. We know more information about this character than we do Mr. Gen Generic on the left hand side. So um, there are two ways that you can approach this. You can use the lasso tool, you can also use the symmetry tool, and then you can certainly combine usage. So let's just do one more um, with the combination of these two techniques. So I'm going to go back to my brush tool. I'll choose vertical. And let's say we're going for uh, more of a uh, feminine character and a character that might be more like an uh, adolescent. So we can go ahead and draw big hair. And we know we'll give a tinier body. And then we'll give some long legs. And you know maybe this character's got sneakers. And we've got the hands and so now we have something that gives us uh, some insight into who this character might be and again this is the starting point I can turn off the symmetry tool use my paint bucket tool and fill in the values and then I can refine. So I can say, all right, well, maybe I want the hair to be a little bit clearer to read. Um, maybe I want to carve that hairstyle out a little bit more. Um, maybe her 
uh, shirt kind of extends down a little bit, right? Maybe I want to uh, vary up this pose and make it a little bit, you know, less symmetric. So you can you can do all of that with a combination of the lasso tool and the symmetry tool. And we'll explore this concept a little bit more in my next video where I'll work from a text description and actually ideate the silhouette and try various silhouettes to see what you know what makes the most sense for further development. So I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much and I will see you in the next video.